Two months ago, I shared a strategy that I was using to start selling AI automations like SaaS, packaging their automation into a clean front-end app that the client can actually use. And it done all right. It's on about 8,000 views. And I'm sure most of you guys, my subscribers, actually came from that video. And it's actually because that, that one idea changes everything. You know, I, I didn't get this from YouTube or Twitter and those of you who know me and have been watching me understand that I didn't start this business because of anything I've seen on YouTube or Twitter. I got it from working in enterprise tech sales, selling solutions that were built on Microsoft's Power Platform. If you haven't heard of that before, it's literally just another make.com NA10 that allows you to create um, automations for people. And these were five to six figure automation projects, projects. And every single one of them was wrapped in a front end app. So the client could use it like it was software. And that's where I got the idea. And now I'm seeing other creators jump on it. And one even said that it's been around for about a month, but obviously here's my video from two months ago, but I'm not here to be salty complain i'm here to go deeper because this strategy really does work and if you want to turn your automations into real money this is how so let me first show you why this model is actually so powerful in enterprise tech sales i was selling the microsoft power platform automations for 1250 pounds per day that's how much the engineer's day rate was and some projects took 30 plus days but no matter how complex the back end was it was always delivered for a front end app something simple clean clickable and that's what made the project so tangible for the client that's what made it feel like an actual product something that they were actually buying and the second it looks like a product it feels like SaaS. And that's when you can start actually pricing like SaaS. Three and a half grand to 10 grand per project with retainers of 500 quid plus. You're not charging for nodes or make.com modules. You're selling an outcome in a software wrapper. So here's actually an example of a dashboard that I've created for a client. If you guys know me, you know I deal a lot with uh, lead generation that's my core offering that's what I always reach out with and it's what I help most businesses with and it's turned out it's what I know most about so it's what I sell the most of now this was actually my biggest project this was for a recruitment firm who hire for the FTSE 100 so if you again if you know me I like to volume is really important to me uh, I I sell I I send a lot of emails, right? About 10,000 each campaign, I, I send a lot. So I reached out to these and we had a we had a meeting and well, we had a few meetings and really for them, since the hiring for the top 100 companies in the world, it wasn't about volume, it was more about targeted outreach. So I included this, which obviously made it a lot more bespoke and was actually a different automation in the back end that would send to another webhook and this would send to another webhook. But if they wanted to, you know, search for the right people and reach out at the right time, this is what they'd input in here. But other than that, this is actually the main one that I sell. Um, I've got a prompt for it, so we'll go through that in, in, in a moment. But essentially what people do is they'll go on Apollo or LinkedIn and they'll like LinkedIn sales navigator and they'll put a search URL in. This is mainly for Apollo. We've done it before where people do a search URL for LinkedIn sales navigator, but instead of it just being one URL because they have to split it, into certain because you can only export 2500 leads at a time as linkedin sales navigator sometimes you have to split into batches so instead of putting the um url to a linkedin search they put a linkedin they put a url to a google sheets which starts scraping through phantom buster and again that is a lot more bespoke but just for argument's sake and for the use of and for the ease of use and explaining, let's say someone does a search on Apollo for 20,000 leads. They'll put that URL in here. We'll have to put the instantly campaign in there as well. So we understand which campaign this is actually, you know, the leads are getting added into. We'll have to have, you know, we'll have to pass that data into make.com or NA10 for it to actually know which campaign to add all the leads to later down the line. A workspace, just in case they have many and also a industry um so a guy if you, if you know about apollo you'll know that sometimes the industry check isn't always perfect right you know you could be trying to reach out to um professional or i don't know con business consultants right 
and it actually includes a few business professors in there who work at schools or universities, colleges, whatever it is. Um, obviously, they're going to they're going to flag you as spam, which is not good. So we add an AI step to make sure that the industry that we've actually searched for is the create is the correct industry we do that after a perplexity search so we we know all about them we know what industry they're in and they press start automation you can see obviously it's a, it's making me fill in this field and all that data gets sent to a webhook so now i'm actually going to show you how easy it is to quickly get set up with a, a whole lead generation automation using bolt.new and make.com and how quickly you can actually set this up for a client. So let's say someone's interested. This is what I use nowadays for my demo. Um, when I'm on a call, I show them that, show them exactly what they need to put in. Just quickly, two minutes just explaining that. I explain what happens in the back end. So it scrapes the leads, it finds the emails, it verifies the emails, it researches the prospects, it creates an email and it adds it into instantly. That's what it all does at the back end within 10 minutes of pressing this button. So let's say, you know, we needed to whip something up really quickly. You'd have to go into bolt.new. And this is the page. That's not the page. This is the page you'd get greeted with. Now, just for argument's sake, we're going to go in here really quickly. Um, congrats to Jacob for getting his first client. <laughs> um, well done if you're watching this, Jacob. We're going to go into... into here, get the prompt from here, uh, copy it, put it in there. Now you'll notice I need to insert webhook somewhere, or you can also insert their website URL. So the way I do this is I want it to be in the client's brand tone of voice. It needs to look, you know, it can't just be a random app that I know some people creators have been doing, but obviously I've been doing this for a long time now. It needs to be bespoke and tailored to them. That's what they want to see. So let's say, let's think of a website. Let's say I was making it for this guy, right? Let's see what happens when I put the website URL in. Let's see if it actually creates it similar. Oh, fuck. Similar to how he has his website. Now, there should be a webhook. Uh, there you go. Insert webhook. So we'll delete that. Go back into here. Classroom. Getting clients. Let's download scenario one. Go to make.com. Import. Choose file. Uh, downloads. Scenario one. Bush. Bosh. Bish. Bosh. Bash. And you see, we've got the, um, whoops, the, 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 uh, the start of the automation here. So we'll add a webhook. We'll call it YouTube demo test, Demio test, save, copy the address into bulk.new and paste it in there. Okay. Now press go and let's see what it comes out with. Essentially, what if you haven't heard of Bolt.new, if you haven't seen any of my previous videos, it's a web application. You can even create um, mobile applications all from prompting. As you can see, it writes the code all for you. You can connect it to absolutely anything. I'm actually creating my own CRM at the moment. I say I'm creating it at the moment. I spend about 20 minutes a day at night just before bed giving it a few prompts um but essentially when a lead responds positively positively to me it's actually got its own api using superbase to update my own crm that i've created anyway let's just let it download run get it ready and there you go it didn't actually come out in the um like this so you have to just take a screenshot and just paste it in here and it'll see it's sort of done it like that anyway you'd also add their um you can get their logo in there you can put their their business name in there and stuff like that so let's click on this see how it works so you'd have to do an apollo search url and you can see it tells you how to do it apollo.com let's see if that works and it's submitted so the problem 
successfully determined. There you go. So it was obviously listening for it. And now if I was to unlink, run. Two seconds. My dog wants to, I can hear him wanting to come in. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> um, and now it's listening. We can do HTTP, PWTPTS, Apollo.com, whatever. And that's optional. Press submit. And if you go into make, you'll see it's got everything in here. It's got the campaign ID, the industry, and the Apollo URL. Now, because make, you can't pass data so easily from different um, scenarios. We then add that into a data store. So everything's in there. And also we'll run a task. So within Appify, we'll search for an Apollo scraper. This one's pretty good. And you can see all you actually need to put in is a search URL. Now, one important thing with this is that if you do it via just the actor, right, you can either create a task or you can run it through an actor. This is, this is the actor here, or you can create a task. If you run it through the actor, it actually times out. So what we'd need to do is create a task. Now we'd be able to connect this through the API. So if we go into make, click the Apollo scraper. Now you have to put this in. So get personal emails, we don't want that. Get work emails, true. And then the URL we put in as Apollo URL. Now, if you think about it, as soon as they press submit, whoops, this will get the data, it will add it into the data store, and then it will start running the task, which means it will start scraping those leads completely autonomously, right? Now, we want to set up scenario number two. So again, into here, scenario two, download, back into make, import, choose file, scenario two, open it up, save, bosh. So, remember what we've done. We've put it into the bolt dot new app we've then it's it's running the task and now scenario two is a webhook and that's watching for that scenario to end okay sorry that's watching for the for the actor this the task run to end so it's watching as soon as that finishes it will all the data will get sent to there We'll then have to retrieve the data through a data set item and you'll have, it will be one operation, but say you've done a 20,000 lead scrape, you've got 20,000 in there. And then we need to send that to a webhook for personalization. So it will go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 20,000 times. And after it's done, it will add all those into a Google Sheets, all those leads there ready for the, the lead, uh, sorry, the your prospect to actually see. If... They don't want it landing in a Google Sheet. You could just put their CRM in there. You could put whatever you want there for all the leads to get added into there at the same time. Now, you might be wondering why we have the data store record there because we need to get, we don't actually need to do it in this scenario, but we need the campaign ID. So I'm guessing in here, I've sent the campaign ID through. Yeah, the campaign ID, the industry input, everything like that gets sent through to the next scenario. So what do we do? We create another scenario, delete all that, back into here, get the third one, download it, import, choose the file, scenario three, open it up, save, bosh. And there you go. And then one by one, the, well, pretty much all the time, but one by one, they're all the leads that have been scraped are getting sent to another webhook and one by one they're sequentially coming into here which will be that the verified the email will be verified if it's verified perplexity will research then we'll make sure that the industry is correct if the industry is correct we'll create an icebreaker or create an email or create a follow-up email subject line to whatever it is that the prospect has asked you to do we'll pass that json and add it into instantly and that's it. They can just keep refreshing their industry uh, there instantly and they're getting constant um, leads getting added into their campaign without lifting a finger. All they've done is gone on Apollo and gone into their little app and put it in here, press submit. And that's all they've had to do. They don't have to worry about all this in the back end. 
Don't have to worry about anything. As you can see, it's brake modules to redo it. If it breaks, it's pretty much unbreakable. Here, you might get issued with a timeout, which is why it's called avoid timeout. I do have another um, bit in my community about we have a repeater in here and it just sends 50 at a time. A bit of math is involved um, to just offset. So it'll get the first 50, send it across. Next 50, send it across. Next 50, send it across. Um, so we're avoiding any timeout or uh, rate limits with the HTTP, HTTP module. But that is literally how simple it is to create an incredible, bespoke, tailored, tangible, SaaS-like automation for a client. And it's so great to pitch as well. Because when someone says, yeah, sure, send the video over, you'll just have your loom, you'll explain it. They're going, wow, okay, that looks really cool. And then you can leave, even run it on the loom and you'll show them within your instantly the amount of leads that are getting added in. You can just keep refreshing it all the time. Obviously, you can also do this on Lovable. If you haven't heard of Lovable, it's pretty much the same. I think even Google have released something that's a competitor to both lovable and bolt which uses gemini as well so you can have a look at the amount of credits that costs if budget is a con if, if it's a concern you could easily build this with one prompt like i've shown you on a free account of bolt because i'm pretty sure you get two million tokens i could be wrong though and as you can imagine you can set this up in na10 just as easily you'd add a first step on webhook call change that to post You've got the path in there. Copy the webhook URL. Go back into Bolt. Change the webhook to this. Let it just do that. And that's done. So let's type in that. Make sure it's listening. Listen for test event. Press submit. Check in here. And there you go. It's got the, the body right here. And you would then just carry on through the workflow, whatever it is you want. Now, this, need, this should be done with every automation you sell, right? It should be done for a front end app. That's the best way to do it. Now, I've seen a couple creators jump on this now who realistically, you know, shout about making 100K per month. Ask yourself, do you really think if they're making that much money from YouTube and communities and affiliates that they're really actually selling these automations? If you do think that, then I might worry, worry for you a little bit. <laughs> but it's, it's not my place to say. And so... If you want to learn from someone who is actually creating the apps, who had the first idea to actually create the apps, who knows, who actually has implemented these apps into other people's businesses, then drop me a subscribe, drop me a comment, like the video as well. Let's see if we can beat my last um, upload of this video, which got 8,000 views. Let's see if we can beat that. That'd be great. But look, I really hope this helps. I hope this gives you some clarity on to what it is you should be selling these people. Fuck the back end. Fuck the automations. Who gives a fuck? This, the front end apps, is what makes it tangible, makes it sexy, makes it feel like a SaaS, is going to really increase the value of your product. And I knew when I first uploaded it, it would change the game. Um, obviously, a few creators have been a bit slow to jump on it. But yeah, if you want to learn from the original, then follow this guy. <laughs> And look, if you want your, if you haven't landed your first client yet, or if you have, but you're struggling to scale beyond 10K, then check out my community. People are now getting their first clients in. It's great to see. I show you everything that you need to get your first clients. So it'd be great to have you in there. But I really hope you enjoyed this. Give it a like, drop me a comment, drop me a subscription, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.